So a lot of people ask me, Ian, how does Ice Lake Xeon perform in mining? What's your minimum specification? So the reason why I'm in this part of the office is because I have this single 1U system with two Ice Lake Xeon Gold 6330s. This is the 8280 equivalent 28 core 205 watt upgrade uh, from Cascade Lake. Uh, this system is a super micro, let me get the name right, the SIS 120U TNR. Uh, inside, like I said, we've got two 26, 228 core Intel Xeon Golds. Uh, we have 512 gigs of memory and a couple of PCIe 4 drives. It's a pretty straightforward system for compute. There's space in here for multiple graphics cards. I think it's uh, two 1200 watt power supplies. And uh, I'll do some you know, B-roll of what, what it looks inside. But if you've seen a server, you've probably seen them, uh, seen, seen one, seen them all. It's got some extra um, storage for the front panel. And we're gonna see what it looks like in mining. So first things first, let's turn this thing on and you can hear how loud it is. This is pretty loud. Ooh. So we're gonna let the system start up and boot into Windows. Five minutes later. So the reason why we're using this very small screen is that we're actually taking the screen off the IPMI. Uh, I don't have a graphics card installed. What I have installed, however, is NiceHash. Let me just load up some NiceHash here. Sit tight, the miner will be with you soon as it starts to ramp up. Hopefully this is coming through on the audio. It's quite loud in the room, so let's just start it up. This has already been pre-benchmarked. And my power meter is saying 560, 570 watts, 578 watts. And this system is starting to pull some massive load. It's already getting shares accepted. If we load up, if we load up task manager, we'll see that this system is actually only using 50% of the cores. In fact, it's only using one thread per core. You can see here that this system is capable of making about two US dollars a day. I'm sorry, but for 590 watts now, that's completely minuscule. Go to the benchmark page, we see here that on Monero, we're roughly getting 17.3 killer hashes. And yeah, this system stays really, really loud. Now let's see how that compares to a 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X. So this is the Ryzen 9 5950X system. As you can probably already tell, it's super quiet by comparison, just in idle. So let's do the same thing again. Let's load up nice hash. Let it do its thing. And we start mining. So by contrast, this system can use all the available threads and we'll get into exactly why in a second. We change the graph to logical processors. You can see them all running at 100%. And this processor with 16 cores is good for 74 cents per day. I just realized you can't see that. Let's go over here. See 74, 75 cents a day. And if we go into the benchmark section, you'll see that we're pulling about, it says, let's uh, zoom in here, 9.468 killer hashes. So this is just over half of what a dual 28 core Intel Xeon can do. But I guess it's important to understand exactly why. 
So as we've known for a while, CPU mining, there just isn't anything worth doing. You're wasting so much power and getting so little back. But why is something like the Xeon Gold, uh, Ice Lake Xeon from Intel, doing comparatively so much worse? We've got 56 cores versus a 16 core AMD Ryzen Zen 3. Now, the problem is that on that system, we only were using 42 cores available. Even though NiceHash saw all the, all the cores available, the issue comes down to the amount of L3 cache. So on the consumer Ryzen CPUs, we have 64 megabytes of L3 cache for 16 cores. So it's an effective four megabytes per core. With the Intel Xeon Gold, with the Ice Lake Xeons, Intel rearranged their cache structure a little. So we no longer have that minimum two megabytes per L3, two megabytes of L3 per core that's required for the CPU mining. What they've done is they have a 1.25 megabyte L2 and a 1.5 megabyte L3 per core. So the L2 cache is private, the L3 cache is shared. There are Intel CPUs in the, in the Xeon Gold stack. Um, I think there's one that does actually 2.25 megabytes of L3 because they've disabled some cores but left the cache open. But where Intel used to have, say, five or ten of those SKUs in their product stacks, this time around they only have three of these higher L3 per core CPUs. But that is ultimately the limit. If you only have one and a half, five megabytes of shared L3 cache per core, what, a, what something like uh, NiceHash is going to do, what something like mining is going to do, if it needs two megabytes of L3 per core, it'll use up as much as it can and then use the cores that are necessary in order to fill that in. And that's the limit where we are. The reason why I've done this video is I got a single request on one of my Ice Lake Xeon coverage videos that said, hey Ian, how does it mine? Poorly, and it uses a lot of power. So thanks everybody for watching. This was a short, silly video I, th I, I thought was just kind of interesting to run, really. Uh, I want to do a full breakdown of the Supermicro system that we have. And uh, if you enjoy this content, please consider giving to my Patreon, patreon.com slash techtechpotato. It really does help out the channel. We're looking to get more cameras. We're looking to start to pay a video editor to do some of the more fancy videos. And if you have thoughts on what you want to see on the channel, please leave a comment down below. So what's your minimum specification here? Well, it's got to be two megabytes of L3 per core, really.